Hey everyone, how are you doing today? I had a couple of weeks break just recently. I just needed some space for myself and for my thoughts. I got to do some writing, most importantly I got to do some reading. And it was nice to spend time with some friends and family that I've not really got to spend much time with lately. So all in all, it was a really nice trip. However, the best part about this entire trip was the book haul. I managed to pick up so many books, um, variety of formats. So I got some actual books. I also got some eBooks. This is the stack of books that I got that are the actual physical books. So just a few, some of them were actually borrowed from relatives. Um, the rest were bought mostly in charity shops. A few were bought at a local WH Smiths and the rest were all from local charity shops in the two towns that I visited. And all in all, it was a really great book haul. So I'll go through them quite quickly with you. The only non-fiction book that I got was How to Write a Novel in 10 Minutes by Catherine Grubb. This one is borrowed from my sister-in-law and as I am currently writing I've got one novel on the go that I plan to make into a trilogy and I have another novel that sort of came to me while I was falling asleep the other day and immediately made me get back up and write for two hours and yeah I got very little sleep that night. <laughs> Next we have the sort of more adult stuff. These are based on true stories. Um, so we have The Book Thief and The Tattooist of Auschwitz. The Second World War, particularly the concentration camps and everything around that hits particularly hard for me. Um, I found out not too long ago that I come from Jewish ancestry and we found out that there is about 99% chance that we did lose family to Auschwitz and it's always been, my mum was always very big on telling us the story of what happened and she said that as long as she lived the stories and the memories will never be forgotten and I've kind of vowed the same that while I'm alive my family will not forget what happened. I got four more books that are considered adults, so we have four here. Again, three of these four are books that I've never really heard of, and also they're authors that I don't know, and kind of not really the sort of thing that I generally would typically go for. But we have Rage Against the Dying by Becky Masterman, but it's basically about a C an FBI agent who has secrets of her own, she's trying to solve a murder. And it's like, I've always been a fan of true crime, and so why not? It sounds like of crime stories, this is kind of the one that got my attention and made me kind of want to read it. So I'm going to give that one a try. We then have uh, The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Steadman. It's about a man and his wife who a boat appears at their lighthouse with a dead person inside it and a baby and they keep the baby but there's repercussions from it. Um, I've heard it's very emotional so again not usually my kind of thing but I was really attracted to the cover and I thought hey let's give it a try. We then have The Watchmaker of Filigree Street. I really liked this because I loved the cover when you open it and it's got like the little circle here so when you open it it's got the watch inside and I really like the map. If I try and... I really like that map. And then we have Naomi Novik's Temeraire. Um, I've read Uprooted last, last month I read Uprooted. Even though I enjoyed it, I did struggle with some of the pacing and it kind of felt like we were forever waiting for things to actually be explained and actually happen. And then when it did, it all happened in the last three chapters and it felt a bit overwhelming and a bit rushed. So I'm hoping this one's a bit different, but it's all about dragons and ships and things. So I'm like, yay, fantasy, I'm good, I'm happy. Moving on to the YA section, we have a few books and um, most of them, again, about half are ones that I have previously read. And there are a few that I have not yet read. 
but I think apart from one, every single author on this list I knew. We'll start with the ones that I have previously read. So we have Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. I read this when I was a teenager and I remember really enjoying it, but when my mum passed away I kind of had to get rid of most of my books and unfortunately that was one that had to go. Need by Carrie Jones which I absolutely adored because I love that she has this fresh new take on pixies and we get a lot of fairy stories, you get a lot of stories about elves and goblins, things like that, but it's very unusual to have the main magical creature being pixies, so I really adored that she did that. Um, and then the next day when I went into one of the local charity shops, after seeing this one and buying this one, I went into a different town where I found the rest of the series. So I was over the moon, so I ended up with the entire series and I was extremely happy and I cannot wait to reread all of these. I then got three more books. So this was the only book of the entire set that I bought brand new at the full price. Everything else was all like one to two pounds. And that's The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I mainly got it because I adored the cover, it's my favourite colour, it's my favourite kind of thing with trees and leaves and I then read the blurb and I was sold so I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. I've heard great reviews about it and it will be read next month. I also picked up The Lie Tree by Frances Harding. This is one that I've not read, I don't know the author and it's not usually my kind of thing. I think it's more of a dark gothic horror type thing, which I generally don't go for, but I am, like I said, I want to start trying to push and read sort of different stuff that's more out of my comfort zone. So I'm kind of nervous about this one. And then I bought Soundless by Rochelle Mead. I read the Vampire Academy series that she wrote when I was, again, a teenager and I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't like the, was it a movie? I can't even, yeah, the movie that came out I thought was a bit rubbish and I didn't feel it fit the books at all. But I thought because I liked her previous stuff, I'll give this one a go. And I really did enjoy it. I've seen some really, really negative reviews on Goodreads and I don't feel this book gets as much love as it actually deserves. So that was it for the actual physical books. On to the ebook section. I'm gonna move over slightly so I can use this little space here. Like here. And what I'll do is when I'm talking, I'll just flash up the picture that is the cover of the book. Um, and then you can have a look for yourselves. So we have, I was introduced to a couple of new platforms. Um, one is an app called Bookmate and I think it's $9.99 a month and you can basically rent out any of the books that are in their library and there's some quite varied stuff on there and I picked up quite a few of the books that are on my TBR and that are quite raved about and books that I've seen in a few other places so I was like well if I rent them there give them a try and with all ebooks if I like them enough and rate them a four or a five star then I'll buy them. So on that we have The Selection by Kira Cass. That's one that I've heard being talked about a lot and I know in the Fairy Loot box for June we did get a little thing that was from The Selection so I'm looking forward to that. But this one I'm really looking forward to. Winter Song by S.J. Jones. It's basically the retelling from what I understand it's either the retelling or it's set in the same world as the labyrinth from you know the 1980s Muppets labyrinth and that is absolutely one of my top 10 if not in my top three all-time favorite films and I am a sucker for retellings of things and especially if it's in that sort of kind of dark fantasy type setting so I am extremely excited to be reading that one soon. And there's Shatter Me by Tahiri Maffi. Again, that's one that I've seen recommended a lot and I know a lot of booktubers have raved about it. Then we have both Alice and the Red Queen books by um, Christina Henry. I am thinking of doing a video series that 
or a video soon that is just on Alice in Wonderland retellings because in my TBR at the moment I think I've got five or six books all set within the Alice in Wonderland universe and have different retellings and different ways of looking at that storyline and um, yeah so I'm excited for those. I've said the word excited a lot but I'm excited damn it! Next one is I know people have absolutely exploded over this book which is Illumine by um, Amy Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Again I've heard incredible reviews but I've also heard people tend to either, it's like Marmite, you either absolutely love it or absolutely hate it so we'll see. It sounds a bit more sci-fi than what I usually go for but I am intrigued. And then the final book that I got for Bookmate was An Ember in the Ashes by Sabia Tahir. Again, I know, sorry, by Saba Tahir. I know it's one that, again, has been quite popular with people and where I've started dipping my toe in kind of stuff that's set in historic periods, I'm kind of looking forward to that as I've not actually read anything yet that's set in the Roman period and this is, so whoop. I was then also introduced by my friend's mum to, it's called ebook farm, so basically it's a weird system, you have to register yourself and then to purchase books you have to first buy a voucher from amazon.com, not .co.uk, and then once you've got that Amazon voucher you then redeem the code through the website, but the savings you make are amazing. For example, I bought Graceling by Kristin Kishore on there for like three cents, which in a UK money is like less than a penny, I think, roughly it works out as. Um, and like the most expensive book I bought from there was Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Again, it's one that everyone seems to scream about and I've been desperate to read for about three months now which was when I first heard about it and so now I have it and instead of paying sort of 24-25 pounds for the hardback I got it for like $1.79 so definitely check that site out. I also got from that um, Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan as it just sounds like a really amazing story. I need to rescue my books. Hi! Say hi to the camera! <laughs> I also picked up The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I've heard a load of people recommend it. I asked on my Facebook page, like my personal Facebook page, asking for recommendations for one of the prompts in a challenge I'm doing next month. And about seven people were like, this is my favourite book, you need to read this book. Uh, book Roast, who you know I've mentioned a few times, she says it's her favourite book. So I'm kind of like, well, if all these people are telling me it's an amazing book, then I should probably read it. And then the last book that I bought from that website was Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas. I've mentioned it before that I've read The Throne of Glass and I absolutely loved it. Selena Sardothian has become one of my absolute favourite people of all time. And if I can get any sort of visual references, I would love to someday do like a cosplay of her. And then the last platform that I got some ebooks from was Amazon and mostly on there I signed up for Amazon Unlimited so it's $7.99 a month and you just get this huge big catalogue of books that you can read from for nothing. The only downside to it is a lot of the more popular and well-known stuff and the more recent releases aren't yet on there. But the good thing about it is then it means that I'm reading books about or from authors that are quite new on the scene or authors that haven't yet found that big bump in popularity. And I've actually found a couple of amazing series from that, one of which I've mentioned a few times, which is the Relentless series. And I absolutely loved it on there. So a few that I've downloaded. So again, another Alice in Wonderland one. It's called Mad About the Hatter by Dakota Chase and it follows Alice's brother as he goes from not believing her to finding himself in Wonderland and there may or may not be a romance between him and the Mad Hatter which I'm kind of like maybe slightly um, interested by and can't wait to read. 
Then there was Paper Magician by Charlie N. Holmberg. Um, I don't really know a lot about it. I kind of read the blurb and it sounds like it's people who are magicians that work with set substances. And the main character wanted to work with, I think it was metal, but she got put with paper instead. And it's just following all the different types of magicians and all the different types of magic. And then the last one was The Confectioner's Guild by Claire Luna. Basically, um, it's about a girl who works in a confectionery and the confections are all imbued with magic. Only her own magic and her the book starts where her sweets poison her master and she then gets the blame for it and now has to try and prove her innocence and things. So I'm really looking forward to all of that. So I got one hell of a big... TBR boost this month and actually knocked quite a few books that were on my TBR now have moved from my I want to read onto my I now own them so they will be the priority to read and I'm really super super boosted and I can't wait to get started I've already finished like I said I've already finished Soundless um, and I am going to probably start Girls of Paper and Fire today because I've read Sorcery of Thorns, which was this month's Fairy Loot bo book, and I just want to read something else. So the ones that I'd say I'm most excited to read would definitely be the Hazelwood. I'm also extremely eager to get on to Six of Crows, and probably Girls of Paper and Fire, and I'm really looking forward to rereading the Need series by Carrie Jones. So those are kind of like the top four that I'm most excited for and most of them will actually get read next month so I'm quite excited for that. Um, have you read any of these books? Are there any on the list that you yourself have not read yet? If you've got any other recommendations that are similar to any of those then also let me know and that is probably going to be one hell of a edit for me and one hell of a video for you to watch so if you've made it through to the end Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao!